Hello there, and welcome to Gage Hill Crafts. My name is Sarah, and I'd like to welcome you back. If you're a repeat visitor, thank you for tuning in again. And if you're new, welcome, and I hope you uh, enjoy what you're watching here on our channel. Um, we do cover a variety of crafts, primarily fiber arts things, cooking, and homebrew. Um, and in the new year, we're hoping to get back into doing some more interviews with other crafters. Um, but meanwhile, I had started a series a few weeks ago, and this is a continuation of this ongoing larger project of a sheep to sweater. Um, I have a few sheep, and I've always wanted to take their raw wool, process it myself, and turn it into a sweater um, garment. And you may think that, you know, I should have done this a long time ago, and probably probably I should have, um, but my primary focus in the fiber arts has always been knitting, and it's taken me a long time to get uh, more interest and experience in other aspects of fiber um, processing and preparation, um, particularly some of the messier steps, which is what we've been talking about so far, so skirting and washing fleeces in preparation for spinning them. Um, today is a continuation of uh, exploring different washing methods or washing techniques. Um, last week I talked about your sort of straightforward hot water wash with detergent and this week is a variation on that um, but based on some advice and some comments um, most particularly from Carrie of My Wool Mitten uh, but also some other reading that I've done um, I went ahead and tried a rinse, a pre-rinse first just to see how that would um, affect the rest of the washing process and whether it would make it any more efficient. Um, so in my collection of fleeces, uh, I happen to have some fleeces that my mother actually bought from a friend of ours a few years ago. Uh, these are Romney fleeces and Romney is a long wool um, breed of sheep. It originates from England and it has a, a long stable length and a lustrous fiber. Um, and it's very nice to work with. It's not the softest yarn. Most long wools um, are a higher micron count than, uh, than your fine wools, your rambolets and your merinos. Um, but it's a very good kind of all-purpose uh, kind of wool, the Romney. It's soft enough to wear as a hat or up next to your skin, um, but it's very hard wearing also. And um, if processed correctly, uh, sheared and, cr and processed correctly. Um, it doesn't tend to pill or shed or, you know, um, sag or anything like that. The, the finished garment uh, tends to hold its shape pretty well. So excited to try spinning some Romney eventually. Um, but these fleeces, like I said, had been sitting for a while. And so I was curious to see what methods would work well for getting them clean. Um, as I explained in a previous video, when you let wool sit with the lanolin and the manure and dirt on it for a long time, and these have been sitting for about two and a half years in our garage, um, and th that lanolin can start to break down. It can start to become especially gummy and very difficult to remove. Um, and the dirt and the manure that's been sitting on the fleece can also stain the wool uh, over time. So it is always better to wash as quickly as possible after sharing. Um, but you know, I've, I've heard of people who have old fleeces that have been sitting for years and they still use them. Um, as long as they're not infested with moths or, or have other problems, you know, you can, you can kind of resuscitate the wool and, and still use it. So I wanted to see how that might work. And Carrie had suggested a hot water pre-rinse um, in this case, just to kind of uh, speed up the, I guess, rejuvenation process on that lanolin, really kind of help melt it and get some of it off before uh, hitting the wool with some detergent. So that's what I did. I uh, filled up my wash basin with the hottest water that I could draw from the tap. I estimate it's around probably 115 degrees. It's definitely uncomfortably warm to like stick your hand in the basin when it's uh, when it's fresh water, and um, decided to just uh, lay my fleece in there for about 10 minutes. Um, I didn't want the water to cool down at all. I wanted to maintain that hot temperature, but just allow the, uh, the locks to kind of open up 
and bloom a little bit. Allow that water to get in between each of the individual fibers and allow it to melt some of that sticky lanolin that's been sitting on there for a long time. And I will say that that initial um, rinse seemed to really work well. Um, the water was certainly very dirty when I pulled the wool up out of it after the 10 minutes. So I could tell that a lot of the dirt and the grime had um, come off of the wool. Um, I ended up saving this, and I'll, I'll talk about why in a future video, but I ended up saving this dirty water because it was just the dirt from the sheep and it wasn't there wasn't any detergent in it. Um, so then from there I proceeded to put the uh, wool into a detergent um, soak, hot water detergent soak, and this time I used um, about half of the detergent that I had used in the, the straightforward hot water wash that I did last week. So uh, one tablespoon of powdered laundry soap and one, uh, two tablespoons of liquid dish detergent. Pre-dissolved in the hot water, lay the fleece in, let it sit and soak, and I let that soak for a good 20 minutes before taking it out. And um, then I did, let's see, I did two more hot water rinses at that point, uh, each about 10 minutes, um, 10 to 15 minutes in length. Um, and at that point, I really felt the wool and felt like it wasn't really clean, completely clean. Um, the water was still a little bit dingy and the wool felt a little bit tacky, uh, a little bit sticky. Um, and so I knew that there was still some lanolin on the fibers and that they weren't completely clean. So I went ahead and did a second detergent wash. Um, and this time I put just one tablespoon of dish detergent in. Um, so again, cutting down the amount of detergent used. And that seemed to work fairly well. It definitely got more dirt off that um, the wash water for that second wash was more beige um, than even the rinses had been. And so I knew that that detergent um, had kind of really helped get even more uh, dirt and lanolin off of the fibers um, and then rinsed it two more times. So still a total of six wash wash or rinse um, cycles and I'm I'm a little frustrated with that I'd like to get down to you know just maybe one wash and two rinses but that just doesn't seem to be happening with the fleeces that I've been processing and I don't know if it's the breeds if it's the fact that these have been sitting for a while if it's just that these are you know dirty sheep or dirtier than some other people have encountered um, with the information they've shared I'm not really sure um, they don't look especially dirty like the um, the raw wool for these Romneys was, um, it was yellow because of the lanolin, but it did not have a lot of dirty tips. It didn't have a lot of dirt or manure like caked into the fleece anywhere. So I couldn't really figure out why I had to keep um, washing this. Like like Dory's fleece uh, last week, which is a, a Shetland um, crossbreed sheep, um, I had to, after I was rinsing for a bit, I, I realized I needed to go back and do another wash. And maybe that's just something I need to do, um, is do two washes back to back before I start rinsing. So that's what I'm going to try on the next iteration of this process. Um, but overall, I would say that the, the hot water pre-rinse or any kind of pre-rinse, um, hot or cold, is going to get off a lot of the dirt, especially the, the hard dirt, the caked on dirt, it's going to help that um, rehydrate and start to fall apart and fall off of the fibers. And so I would definitely recommend um, making that a part of your washing routine if you're thinking about buying a raw fleece um, or if you process fleece regularly. I would definitely go with a pre-soak before you add detergent. And I think that is going to cut down on your detergent use, which will not only save you money, but it also be gentler on the environment. Um, and I think it can still be very effective. Um, I just have to kind of hone in my own technique and see uh, see where I can continue to improve that. But you know, this is only my second time washing fleece by myself, so I still feel pretty good about it. Um, the final result, it's drying downstairs, so it's a little hard to fully assess. Um, I'm using my same method where I, I rang out the fleece outside and then I've got it spread out on my drying rack. 
and it's still very wet. I went down and checked on it this morning, so it's going to take a couple of days for it to fully dry and for me to assess it. But just looking at it, I can tell that some of the tips are still dirty. It definitely has a, a yellowy, brownish um, tinge to most of the tips. Um, there's some debris as well, but the debris is like bits of grass or hay, um, so that's actually clean. It's just in there. Um, but I still feel like that fleece probably has a bit of lanolin in it and maybe a bit of, um, you know, dirt, associated dirt. So we'll see. I may end up washing it one more time. Um, I kind of don't want to do that because um, there's always the risk of, the, of overworking a fleece in this stage and felting it. So I'm going to perhaps just work with it um, with just a little bit of lanolin on it. Now, one thing I'll say, um, and, and I spoke about this a bit in the previous video, but this spinning in the grease or, or working with fleece in the grease is not something I'm a fan of because, um, as I said before, lanolin is a wax. It's a hard wax sea substance, and it um, is very gummy and sticky at room temperature. And what that means is that if you are working with a fleece that has a lot of lanolin left in it, that's going to gum up any equipment that you're using to process that fleece. So whether that's wool cards, whether that's a drum carter, um, wool combs, any kind of um, you know hand preparation that you're doing with tools before you spin, and then also of course your spinning wheel. Um, that whole uh, drivetrain from your hands to the orifice to the flyer and the bobbin, all of that is going to get covered in this sticky, greasy substance. So even if that lanolin is very clean, it's still going to create a gummy, sticky residue um, on your fiber tools. And now if you do um, hand process things, or if you've started spinning on your own, you know that these tools are very expensive. And in some cases, um, you know, makers will go out of business um, or things like that. And so if you have a limited edition set of tools, or you know a, a, a spinning wheel that costs several hundred up to a thousand dollars. I don't want to have to go in and try to remove lanolin from these expensive tools. So it's my preference really to get the fleece as clean as possible, have as little lanolin left on it as possible. That's now I realize that's not everyone's personal preference. Um, in fact, we've had some comments uh, on the last couple of videos. Hi, Di, um, and. Uh, absolutely you know do whatever you want to do um, it's your fleece it's your equipment uh, it's your spinning experience so absolutely do it the way that you want for the final product that you're looking for um, but for me I would rather add spinning oil um, that's clean and is easier to get off of um, my equipment uh, at the time of spinning or add a conditioner to the finished yarn or something like that if I do want that kind of um, you know, soft, silky feeling or the feeling of, of a kind of conditioned or, or slightly oily fleece, I'd kind of rather add it myself rather than relying on lanolin that may or may not be clean um, and that it really does lend a kind of a sticky texture to everything that it touches. So that's just some things to think about, especially if you've never um, washed a fleece before. Uh, certainly for your first time uh, working with a fleece, I would err on the side of a cleaner fleece that has less of the lanolin and natural oils in it just because it is going to be um, easier to work with a sticky lanolin leaf fleece is going to be harder to comb out or to card or to run through your drum carter because it's going to want to stick together um, and it, again it's also going to create a gummy residue on whatever equipment you're putting it through so that's that's my opinion that's my thinking but I don't hold that as you know the ultimate truth either you can do whatever you'd like. Um, and yes, some some uh, spinners do uh, oil their fleeces before they spin them. And I'll talk a little bit about that maybe in the fiber prep section once we get to that stage of, of combing and carding a fleece um, in preparation for spinning. We can talk about oiling your fleece. Um, so that's always an option. You can always add back something if you want. Um, so there is a third washing method that I also started, um, and that's the suent uh, fermented vat method that I mentioned last time. Again, I'll talk more in detail about that in the next video when, uh, when the suent method is run its course and I have the finished fleece to show you. 
Um, but what I did was I took the dirty rinse water from this, uh, this time and put it into the vat as kind of a starter culture. Um, I, the more I was reading about the suet method, you really want to start with as dirty water as possible. So I thought because I had that lanolin uh, rich and um, dirt rich water from my first rinse from this vat, I could use that kind of as a starter. And then I added a set, uh, a different fleece, same Romney breed, same farm. Um, and I'm kind of hoping to do a side by side comparison between the fleece that I washed yesterday with this um, hot water pre-rinse pre and lower detergent use with the suant vat, which is going to be um, very little or no detergent in the final, you know, rinsing stages, um, but no, no detergent up front because it's going to have this fermented action going on. And that is going to take a week or two to fully um, finish uh, working. So I'm not exactly sure when the next uh, video in the series is going to come out, but it should be sometime in 2019 at least. And um, then from there we'll get into carding and combing. So that's just something to look forward to. Um, other things to look forward to, uh, Rick has recently racked a beer into the keg. Um, and homebrew is definitely something we like to talk about on the channel and share homebrew recipes for any of you who are interested in making your own uh, homebrew beverages. So look for that. And um, I also have a new hat pattern, a hat and mitten pattern set coming out very soon. Um, I, I'm going to get it out. Uh, there is a, a holiday market here in Bethel, Vermont coming up the first two weekends of December. So I'm going to have it out for that because I'm going to have kits available. Um, but I'm also going to release the pattern on Ravelry. And um, so that way, if you have yarn in your stash or you want to make a version of this with your own yarn, be able to do that too. So look for those two things coming up and then we'll probably get back into fleece prep after that. I also want to just wish everyone a safe and happy holiday if you're uh, celebrating American Thanksgiving this coming week. Um, I hope that goes well for you, safe travels, good eating, um, and mostly just enjoy your company um, whether you're on your own or uh, with your friends and loved ones. Enjoy your company, relax, and uh, maybe do some crafting uh, find some time for yourself as well. Thanks a lot for joining me and tune in next week. We'll have more for you. Cheers.